eventually, you know, it's going to be, all right, this mesquite thicket, let's clear a couple shooting lanes and put a stand and a feeder or a stand and a food plot in here. Right. And make this setup work because, you know, it's, yeah, like I said, you want the deer there, but at the same time, when it's this blank, if you build it, they'll come. I was thinking, I I was thinking feel a dream. Yeah. If you you make it, they'll come. (laughs) So... I mean, and, that, and that's what it'll, it'll come down to. That's what it's been with the stands that we have out here so far. You know, deer probably didn't heavily congregate in that specific area, but now you give them a food source right there, and once they find it, they're going to come to it. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got her, dude. She's down. Let's go. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoked him. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely get your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Oh, obsession podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody, to another Fall Obsession podcast episode. Appreciate you guys tuning in for another week. If you're a new listener, we bring another one of these podcast episodes to you guys every single Monday morning. So be sure you hit that follow and subscribe button. This week uh, is a little bit different in our setup, and if you are a returning listener, you probably know it's a little bit different sound in the audio, and that's because we're recording kind of bare bones setup here um, in Deer Camp. I'm sitting here with my dad, Mark, who's back on the podcast for a second time. Welcome back, Dad. Thanks, son. Good to be here with you and your listeners. Yeah, I <clears throat> was thinking about it, and it's been I. Episode three, I think, was the the only one that we've recorded with you back in the the early stages of our podcast, <laughs> and here we are recording episode eighty five wow. right now. Yeah, so yeah. milestones. Yeah, so it's been a it's been a spell since we had had you on here, but I'm glad we got the opportunity to do this. And like I said, we're sitting in Deer Camp right now on the the Texas Dirt property from the YouTube series that we're running right now. So. Um, going to talk a little bit about that today, I think, and just kind of keep the conversation casual. Um, for our listeners' sake, if you guys don't know, to kind of give you all a little bit of backstory, we have a, a lease that we're on. It's me and Dad and our media production manager, Nick Powell, and his dad are the four hunters on the property. Um, it's eight, a little over 800 acres in the North Texas area, um, untouched whitetail country is pretty much a good way to sum sum it up. It hadn't been hunted in decades. These deer that are out here now have never been pressured. They they don't know what that is, pretty much. Uh, So it's a blank slate, and with that comes a lot of work. Um, But we're we're doing our best to live up to the challenge. You guys can follow along with that journey, like I said, in our YouTube series, Texas Dirt, that we have on our Fall Obsession YouTube page. But... I know Nick and I have, we've talked about this property on the podcast before, but we've never talked to you or Nick's dad about it. Right, so, right. you know, like I said, it's it's blank slate. It's it's a, a new adventure for a lot of us. So I want to talk to you and get your, your thoughts on the place. And not just first impressions versus now that you've had a few hunts out here, you know, your your thoughts with that, but... I mean, also comparing it to properties that we've hunted over the years and the properties we hunted growing up to, you know, me growing up and, you know, learning to hunt over the years when I was a kid and all that kind of stuff, so. Right, right. But tell us, I mean, just kind of start us off telling us what you think of the place. and. Well, for your listeners, obviously, if they're watching the Texas Dirt Series, they'll see it, but it is it is raw, untouched property. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in comparison, when you and I have hunted in leases in the past, they have... Uh, rows and they have stands and they have feeders and they have everything already marked out here there's nothing (laughs) yeah it's basically nothing and uh, I was thinking as we you and I are driving on to check cameras today um, just there's so many hiding spots every acre is a hiding spot for big deer yeah there there's thick Um, you and I were talking about putting a camera you know on the on the east end of the property because nobody goes up there Mm mm-hmm there are no roads up there. I see deer coming off my stand, um, heading that way in the mornings to bed down. And, uh, 
but we don't know and there's no way to get to them real easy yeah you know? so if, if you harvest something it's a long way to the road <laughs> yeah and we felt that just a little bit even this trip too because yeah. you shot the the first day we were out here you shot a pig and that wasn't even like super crazy far back in there but it was still a chore getting it out to the road and and i'll add to that by saying you know we again we're 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 new to this we're new to managing our own property so we've we've pretty much just stuck with pickup trucks as far as our means of getting around and we've hoofed everything else you know if we can't get it to a pick with get to it with a pickup truck we just hoof it in there so we don't have a ATV or anything like that this year that we're working with so that that being said you know it, it makes some of those areas less accessible yes so. and so if anybody wants to give us an ATV or an electric bike we'll take it <laughs> yeah <laughs> any of your listeners want to donate to the cause yeah accepting donations starting now so <laughs> but it's raw untouched land um, so it, it's it's hard to hunt and I think these first years, I remember one of your podcast guests here a while back talked about recon, you know, mm -hmm. being really what you need to do. And that's what we're really doing this first year. We're not trying to upset anything and, you know, do something major. We're just seeing where deer move and right. where they are. And um, and even today, we're looking at some of your um, pictures that were sent from the spy cam. Spy point, yep. Yeah, and we saw uh, deer bucks that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that with you know a nice sized buck, I don't know, eight or ten, I'm not sure, but yeah. you know, one side straight up and one side curved over. It's kind of like, wow, I hadn't seen that, that guy before. Yeah, unique deer for sure, and, and that's kind of one thing, obviously, that a lot of guys can expect on their places with, with the time of year that we're in right now, you know, with that r kind of transitioning into the rut, it seems like, so you're, you're going to find deer that you've never seen before and probably some of your frequent flyers will you know be mia for a while or um you know just kind of we all know how that goes and everything but yeah talking about the <clears throat> the areas that we we haven't seen you know we're you have your stand set up and i got mine and robbie and nick have their their areas but yeah there's there's that, hundreds of acres out here that yeah, we've we've that, yet that, to touch that covers 100 acres out of 800 you know so we yeah have, there's like even today when you were driving and we stopped just we saw a trail let's stop here and put a camera out and you put a camera out there because we haven't even seen what walks across yeah, there that that's one area in particular that i'm very curious about because that that's as far as just a huge chunk that we haven't done anything with yet <clears throat> it's one of the areas that's a little bit less accessible as far as roads and it's it's one of the biggest areas that we haven't we haven't dove into a whole lot so um i'm certainly curious about that i know that i know there's deer out here we've never seen before i know that there's areas we've never been in before and you know we, we've been out here doing what we can ever since the summertime you know so i mean it's it's been a work in progress and it'll be interesting to see how it transitions from this year into year two also you know at, next year i know that's to be determined but how much more we're gonna find and and do stuff with you know this year compared to next also and it'll be it's an evolutionary process for us i mean we we've never done this before and you know finding out where the deer are and then okay next year maybe we can you know make some different setups than we have this year based upon what we've seen in the reconnaissance we'll still be doing recon next year i still think oh yeah um one thing i've i've also been conscious of is the number of bucks out on this property son mm -hmm. we have more bucks I, I i see so few does versus bucks everything i see is a buck mm -hmm. well i saw two does this evening but you know this morning or the light on satellite the other day was you know five shootable bucks and no does and it's like wow I, I, yeah we it's definitely been interesting because like you said I, I don't remember a property ever being on that's been so buck heavy and i think that's what part of what you get being on a property that hadn't been hunted in so long you know because um you get leases that aren't managed very well and you know just trigger happy guys leasing it or hunting out there and yeah your bucks are probably going to take a, a bigger hit than what they would normally and mm -hmm. out here we're seeing a deer population that hadn't taken any hits for a very very long time and we're like you said we're looking at a lot of bucks i know nick and i have mentioned several times you know having a bunch of three and a half year old eight points running around we have a lot of those we and bucks younger than that we got uh 
a four and a half year old on my bow stand, ten point down there. He's a really decent deer. He's he's what I would call for me a borderline shooter, and I've been tempted several times by him now, but I'm trying to save him for my wife to maybe shoot this year. Um, and then you have your big deer on your stand. I'm guessing that deer to be every bit of that's probably the oldest deer we've seen on the property. He's every bit of five and a half right. from looking at pictures of him. And, and we've talked about this too, son. You know we we've never been management minded like we are now mm -hmm. you know 15 years ago we weren't like we are now right and uh we would have shot most of the stuff we've seen out here <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um you know we're looking closely at the age of the deer and and size and trying to set, make some you know critical decisions on mass so for the future for you know for uh, our deer population to grow and and out here and to to, to massage that if we can yeah exactly and and that's the <clears throat> that's the challenging part too is you know you gotta you're trying to balance at the same time one you have a, a heavy buck population to start so the mindset with that is some bucks need to be taken off <clears throat> but then you're also trying to think of am i shooting mature bucks or am i shooting three and a half year olds that don't have as much potential as the other ones and you got cold bucks out here too. And you got cold bucks, and then you're trying to figure all that out, and then trying to figure out, okay, well, is this a deer to let walk, or is this a deer to keep, you know, to go ahead and take this year? Is this deer going to have more, you know, be something bigger next year? You know, you're trying to take all that into account with a buck heavy property right out of the gate, and it's it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. So, and another thing we're having to deal with that we never had to deal with is is I hate to say it, poachers. <laughs> yeah. When we're having to, you know, because this property hasn't been managed or hasn't been hunted for decades, uh, we're finding that some of the locals apparently like to drive in here and to look around and shoot something, I guess. Yeah, it's so the, and to be as, as vague as I can, the, the property does have some traffic that comes through it just from, because there are some, some oil rigs and stuff on the place so there are some guys that you know have to come through here for work and everything but right what we've found really since rifle season opened up and i know i mentioned it in last week's podcast when i talked with drew just kind of for a mid-season update with him but um you know nick's dad had the first encounter with some poachers out here thankfully it was very mild but you know now now that's something that we're having to to keep an eye out for and you know keep the gate shut and you know try to try to keep an eye on all that stuff because like you said nobody's been out here in so long and word's got to get around that this place is hunted now so yeah, at least yeah that's what i told one of the oil guys yesterday yeah and another thing we we, we have a, a multitude of hogs which i've not seen before any least we've had i mean we've had some hogs here or there but not like we've seen on this property so just like the other day you can be driving and, and you were like yesterday you were you looked off to your left and they're you know 166 yards away <laughs> there's two big hogs feeding out in the field and some yeah. piglets and it's like oh yeah well and and we see <clears throat> we see the the big ones regularly just because i mean everything's grown up the grass and the weeds and all these fields and open spaces pastures are are tall so we see the big ones moving, but we don't see the little ones that are coming behind them as much. And as like yesterday, you know, you shot, you shot that big one and dropped her, and the other one ran, and then all of a sudden this line of piglets just kind of follow along. And then when we we come back to the truck, there's another group of like 20, 20, yeah. 20 piglets. And and I say piglets, they're they're young pigs. They're probably 50 pounds a piece, probably. Yeah. But you know, just. 20 of them running around right there i mean they're <laughs> they're everywhere yeah. and that that's what's interesting about pigs too is that they they breed like two or three times a year they have super short gestational periods so they breed all the time and every time they have 10 to 20 piglets so they can repopulate very quickly if not if not controlled so that's something that we're we got to crack down on too and i'm not honestly i'm not super wild about making a bunch of ruckus like really going heavily after the pigs during deer season but at the same time with as many pigs as we have if you see one you got to shoot it yeah yeah you've got one on your stand that keeps coming in and scaring the deer off so yeah he's run the deer out of there i've, I've been in the stand when he's run the deer he like he will run through the area not give me a shot not stay at the feeder and still scare the deer off like he's just a 
big old boar and a turd, so he, <laughs> he needs to go. <laughs> but you ain't got a shot at him either. So. No, not yet. So, but the potential is great, and you know we're looking hopefully multiple year mm -hmm. out here and and seeing what we can do over you know maybe maybe three five hopefully five years is what we're looking at at least to begin with and see what we can what we can turn out you know, with some yeah. management skills and and I know Nick and Robbie you know have the same goal to you know to to manage the deer and try to grow them bigger and you know harvest what we can and yeah and that's been an educational piece for me personally too is you know looking at these trail cam pictures and actually learning more about aging deer I've never felt like I've been good at aging deer I, I i feel like you know a mature buck when you see one but you know as far as making that determination is this tier three is this tier four or two or, or whatever it's it's always been more challenging so that's been interesting is to really dive in and study some of the characteristics of some of these bucks that we're looking at to to just one be able to better educate myself and two obviously to know what we what we have out here and what we're working with yeah. so and imagine over the next you know year or so we'll start giving them some names as we start recognizing them and we walk out you know the horns or get a significant you know something peculiar about them so we know what we're hunting and for instance we we have your, your hit list right now of you know the deer that we want to take off you know right. i got one in my stand you got one in your stand and your wife's gonna probably take that 10 point that's been standing out in front of you at 10 feet away oh my <laughs> word he's been killing me what discipline you have not to take that shot at 10 feet it has been well at 10 feet that was more because i was already had a camera in my hand was already videoing him when he was standing 10 feet away from me so that wasn't even as hard as just sitting there like you get to a point when you're filming where if a deer's out in front of you for a while it's like okay i got enough footage of this deer i don't need to video this deer anymore and then you're just sitting there looking at him right like like tonight he came out and was in front of me for a half hour probably i videoed him when he came in i videoed him long enough at the feeder to get you know him from a few different angles when he lift his head up and then i turned turned the camera off i'm like i i got everything i need for the show so I'm just going to sit here and watch him. And then you're sitting there and watching him and you're studying him. You're like, this is really a big body deer. This is a nice buck. And you're thinking about it and thinking about it. And then when he leaves, you video him leaving and, and that's that. But yeah, it's been, I've had three encounters with this buck now where I could have very easily shot him under 30 yards and saving him for my wife. He's a he's a big body. I didn't realize he had such a big body until you showed me the picture tonight. Yeah, he's big body. well, and honestly, he's even like I've been watching this deer for about a month now, probably, and he's put on more weight in just the last month. And I know that you know the the ruts coming and they've been beefing up a little bit and everything. But uh, also on that buck though too, what's interesting is I've never had I've never seen a buck as patterned on just deer corn as this buck. Because you normally see like the does are your regulars, the does and the young bucks, the regular showing up, and the bigger, older bucks are the ones who will will pass through, mm -hmm. or maybe more late season is when you catch them more frequently coming into your your feeders. But this deer is there at least every other day, if not every day, eating corn. Right. And I, especially this time of year with it being the rut, you know, I expect him to be more on the move, more mobile. And just to see him come in there and hang out for half an hour, I was very surprised to uh, to just see that from a buck like that for this time of year. I've, I've never really witnessed that before. Well, one thing, and I think this this uh, land has not been pressured, right? You know, and and not being hunted. And I saw that last night when I saw I was sitting on a uh, a cut through on a on a gas line, and uh, sitting in some brush and against a tree and a, and a buck an eight point buck walk about 45 yards out in front of me and it, when it came across that gas line that you know cut through they typically stop and look both ways you know but this one just walked straight it came straight across and i'm sitting 45 yards away i'm not brushed in real well you know i'm, I'm still but i'm just watching him walk in front of me and he wasn't at all concerned about anything yeah. So they're not pressured. They haven't been pressured. So this is all new to you know. This will be all new to them. And you know, hearing a gun or, or you know being hit with a with a broadhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're hit with a broadhead, I think that's it. But. Yeah, that's, that's the last <laughs> thing they'll think. No, yeah, that's true. That's the end of it there. But 
No, it, you're right. It's it's a it's a new experience. It's a new challenge. It's a lot of work. A lot of work already, and a lot more ahead of us. But you know, I think uh, I think in the long run, I'm hoping to see some good results. I'm I'm looking forward. I think next year, like you said, to be able to see bucks come in next year and recognize them from this year Mm -hmm. and to see what kind of growth they have to see you know the difference that a year makes out here with the current you know diet and genetics and everything that we have out here and hopefully next year start implementing more specific foods and proteins and everything to maybe start growing some bigger deer you know we have neighbors around the property that that hunt but again this is 800 800 acres a little bit more than that and it has water and food sources on the place so there's plenty of deer out here that this is their home range i right. mean you you talk you talked about seeing deer going back to bed from your stand you know mm-hmm. and there there is that hill with a bunch of hardwoods up there and and that's where they bed you know so th- this is home range for a lot of these deer and so it'll be interesting to see you know how how much we can impact that that year to year growth with these deer being local to us here, and I think the morphing the, the evolution of our uh, hunting will be next year we'll have different setups, and I think probably smaller setups if you will because I think they like you know deer like the close quarters here they like having trees on both sides of them and little corridors and you know so I think we'll we'll figure some of that out in the next in the, in the few years ahead of us and be more specific about okay this is what we're hunting for and this is where they're going and and like you like you said there's areas we will be untouched probably for several years we won't get to just trying to you know cover the whole property right well and and you think about too like especially when you're starting with a blank blank slate like this you're you're gonna have the you're gonna have you know we're, we're trying to move cameras around we're trying to to scout different areas and see what deer are where and where deer are traveling you know is this a more heavily used wildlife trail or is it more of a cattle trail you know running here etc but there comes a point where you're not going to want to set up in their bedroom right and you know they're basically you gotta you gotta just plant your roots down somewhere in regards to a setup at some point yeah you want an area where there's deer and that's kind of what we're looking for is the areas that were deer that there are deer but eventually you know it's going to be all right this mesquite thicket let's clear a couple shooting lanes and put a stand in a feeder or a stand in a food plot in here right and make this setup work because you know it's yeah like i said you want the deer there but at the same time when it's this blank if you build it, they'll come. I was thinking. Know? I was thinking. Feel the dream. Yeah. If you, if you make it, they'll come. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and that and that's what it'll, it'll come down to. That's what it's been with the stands that we have out here so far. You know, deer probably didn't heavily congregate in that specific area, but now you give them a food source right there, and once they find it, they're going to come to it. So. Yeah. Yeah, and this and the, and of course it is rugged property. You had to use a, a, a steer skid to even clear the area to you know put put a camper out here yeah i mean yeah we we did that and that's in one of the texas dirt episodes of us using that skid steer to to clear out some of this area to to park the camper that we have out here now so which is a huge upgrade from the tent <laughs> that we started this season with yeah i told my i told my son he's taken he's taken our uh, deer hunting to a new new level far beyond <laughs> what i ever thought it would dreamed it would be well, it's a little bit more comfortable than uh, sleeping on the ground in a tent. <laughs> yeah. You you made a comment this morning. It's a little bit easier to get up and get dressed in the morning too, <laughs> than climbing over each other. <laughs> yeah, in the tent. When the, when the, yeah, you're right. That's right. But now I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to where it's going to go. And like I said, a lot of work ahead of us. But um, hopefully this year it won't be much longer till uh, till we're putting deer on the ground. Hopefully, at the time of recording, it'll be in the morning because <laughs> it's been a uh, it's been a long a long bow season, and uh, even just these past few days here, starting off rifle season, you know, it's kind of been a, a cat and mouse game. So we're hoping that uh, hoping that tomorrow morning, which for our trip out here for this trip is our last hunt before we head home, we're hoping that tomorrow morning will bring some success. So, right. Right. 
I've got does pretty frequently coming in at my bow blind down there, and I know you, your big guy typically shows up in the mornings at your stand too, so right. hopefully he, he repeats again in the morning, so we'll see. You got anything else? I think that's um, that's all I have for now. Cool. Yeah. I appreciate your listeners tuning in, and I like tuning in to see what's going on. Yeah. Well, you're. I know you're probably one of the one of the loyal listeners from the very beginning that we got. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you're my son. I, I should listen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate it. Like I said, it's been a long time since we had you on here, and um, for for those guys and gals that are listening that might not have heard episode three you might not have made it back that far um like i said that's the one time up till now that dad joined me on the podcast right when our podcast was getting started um and we kind of talked about just some of the the significant more memorable hunts and experiences we've had over the years in that one so it's a good one to go back and listen to i should probably go back and listen to it so you didn't give me rapid fire. You didn't give me rapid fire questions. When, when That's right. I can do that. So I, I forgot. I, I thought about that when we were driving down here. I was like, I don't think we had the rapid fire questions when we did no, the podcast didn't. with Dad. So, the we call them a rapid fire questions, but they're they're not very rapid, I guess. But it's basically just a series of questions that we ask uh, any guests that we have on the podcast um, for, when it's their first time joining us. And since we didn't have the questions back in episode three, I'll go ahead and and hit dad with them now. But the first one is, what is your favorite hunting memory? And tell us a little bit about it. Well, we we always have several. Most of your guests have several. Right. And um, there's two that stick up my mind, and and one of them just came to our our memory, our, our reminder the last day or so, but... Um, we'd hunted in our, when we were, had, had a lease in Central Texas, and we'd hunted there. Had the morning hunt and didn't get any nothing, didn't see anything, get anything, shoot anything. And so we just walk around the property. Right. And I remember you and I were walking. I, I always tell you take your gun in case we see something. And of course it's like eleven, eleven thirty, so you're not you're not thinking you're going to see something. And then your eyes say, Dad, there's a, there's a buck over there. And and I said where over there by that tree i said i can't see it and 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 so um i said well shoot it <laughs> so <laughs> and and so what we did is i i got down on all fours you know like a like a, a shooting rest and sam laid his gun across my back and shot that deer yeah so that, that's one that sticks up my mind and, and then the another one was the, the same property i remember one evening hunting and uh seeing a just sitting there is as the light was starting to fade but there was a I happened to look to my right, and a big buck I came walking by. I can't remember if he's eight or ten, but you know, it's big, eight, ho- yeah. Eight, yeah, big horns came walking about probably twenty yards to my right. Of course, they didn't have a shot. I was just looking out the the window to the side. I was looking straight ahead, and I was saying, "Lord, please let him come out in front of me." And he came almost crawling on the ground. I mean, he came so low on the ground. And huh. We did harvest him, but I, I just remember that. Because I think I had had to take two shots on him, but it was just right. He was right. His head was right on the ground when he came out, and I never had seen that in deer before. Yeah. And just uh, so our listeners know on that one, too, with that that big eight, I believe it was, um, that that is your biggest deer to date. So when I got a little older, I decided to tape out and score all the bucks that we had killed over the years. Okay. And that one taped out. Uh, unless you've killed a bigger one, I don't know about. That's that's about the biggest buck you've as okay. as far as inches that you've killed okay. to date. Well, so I just remember that was also the first time when and when I, I said here, drop me off at the stand, and you go to your stand, and you drove. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was. Uh, I don't. I wasn't even old enough to drive yet, but you know, I was learning, and you taught me how to drive on the deer lease with the jeep. So, yeah, it got to the point where I, I'd, I'd drop you off, and then I'd go to my stand, and yeah. I guess it hadn't changed back since. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I like it like that, but, but those are two memories that stick out my mind. But we have lots that we could talk about for hours. You know, yeah. listeners don't want to hear that. We could just reminisce, and we probably will after we shut the podcast down. Yeah, well, so those are the two I remember on that on that question. And again, there's there's plenty of reminiscing too, and some stories of old in that last podcast we had together. So that's a good one to listen to for some old stories. But all right, second question is what is 
a bucket list hunt that you've never gotten to do that you'd like to? We talked to, this is a long time ago, and we may, may never be able to do it, but we talked about going to the, uh, I think, is it South Dakota on the Milk River? Montana. Montana, on the Milk River. It has big deer out there. And, yeah. You know, that just I just remember seeing a, a broadcast from another um, uh, video series, and the guy was going, man, he's rubbing the, te-. there was a telephone pole in the middle of the <laughs> property, and he's rubbing the pole, big old buck rubbing a telephone pole, you know, so. Yeah, that's from those old Realtree monster buck oh, videos. Yeah, yeah we, and then and growing up, like, that's what we'd always watch, like, I guess around September, we'd start plugging them in and, and watching some monster buck hunts to get ourselves pumped up <laughs> for deer season. <laughs> and it's always, it's always that or rude BH. awakening, because yeah. you see these guys killing these, you know, 190, 200 class deer, and we got here, and if we if we see 130, we're like, wow, a yeah, deer. that's a monster. Yeah. yeah, we pump ourselves up for deer season with the old monster buck VHSs. <laughs> yeah. All right, third and final question, and we always try to make it relevant to the subject matter that we that we talk about. If you had to give a piece of advice to somebody starting out on a new deer lease this year, whether I mean, you can talk about if it if it hadn't been hunted before or if it has, but if you had to kind of summarize one big piece of advice for somebody just starting out on a new property this year, what would it be? I think I think patience uh, and reconnaissance. Mm-hmm. I think those are the two keys, and and you know you you can have great plans and great ideas, but you may alter the whole pattern of you know of the deer on your property when you do something. So just you know be patient see a season or two through and then and then make some plans yeah and that's what i would say that that's good for sure well i appreciate you sitting down for a half hour in deer camp with me dad and recording a podcast it's good to get you back on here and get your side of the the texas dirt property so again looking forward to what this place holds for us in the future yes so. yes we are and, and letting your listeners know as we as we make progress slow it'll be slow progress but we will make progress yeah and it is slow progress but it's it's a journey it's not a it's not flipping a switch overnight and and, and on that note kind of transitioning into closing but as we mentioned earlier the we're documenting all this kind of in a video blog form for you guys um, through our Texas Dirt series that's on our YouTube channel. So go check that out. See the episodes we have on there. Right now we got plenty more in the editing, editing room that are coming out here pretty soon. So be sure that you guys go check all that out. Hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And make sure your notifications are turned on. That way you guys get notified every time we drop a new YouTube video. we got several new videos coming out every week right now. FallObsession.com, that is our website. That's where you guys can go to find all of our content. We have video series, uh, educational articles, wild game recipes. Uh, Our podcast is on there as well. You name it, we got it. So go check us out on there. We have some new apparel on there right now. We're still dealing with uh, trying to get some stuff in with the shortages that are happening right now. But uh, we're doing our best. We do have a few things in stock as far as shirts and hats and hoodies. So... Go check us out on there. Fallobsession.com slash podcast is where you guys can go to leave some feedback on our podcast if you want. Um, If you guys have a question you want to ask, a topic suggestion, a guest suggestion, anything like that, we'd be happy to have you throw it to us on there. Um, Whatever podcast app you're listening on, make sure you hit that follow and subscribe button because like I said at the beginning of the episode, we drop a new podcast every single Monday morning. So be sure that you guys tune in every week. And our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, go hit those up. We post daily on those with uh, hunting and outdoor content from uh, us and our staff. So be sure you guys check those out. Finally, right now, uh, the last thing I'll mention is we have a, we're doing a veteran hunt giveaway right now. Um, it is on our website under fallobsession.com slash giveaway. Um, it's going to be a free range Texas whitetail hunt up in Vernon, Texas. Um, one whitetail buck and unlimited hogs for a three-day hunt for one veteran that's going to get to come out there with us uh, next month and month of December. Cool. At the time of this podcast, applications are open. It's basically an application process. If you 
are a veteran and you, this hunt would mean something to you, you can apply at that website I just said, followupsession.com slash giveaway. Or if you know a veteran, have a loved one or a close friend that you think would uh, benefit or enjoy a hunt like this, you can also enter them uh, or nominate them to be our hunter as well. So head on over to that webpage. The rest of the details are on there and you can apply straight from there. Uh, do it now though because the application process is pretty short. I think the either the 21st or the 22nd of November is when we close the application process and select our winner because again the hunt is in December so we want to give the the winner time to plan and make his arrangements to come down here so um, go check that out there'll be frequent posts on our social media about it as well so well dad thanks again appreciate it thank you son my, my pleasure yes thank sir you. thank you Enjoy, people enjoyed it all right guys thanks for listening we're back with you guys again next Monday for another fall obsession podcast episode we'll catch you then